Hey, I'm Anita Wardlaw and welcome to a fresh new day. On this episode, I'm going to take you to a sermon that I just gave on this beautiful day of September 20th. Uncommonly good responses get uncommonly good results. In Ephesians 5, 15 to 24 it says, See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Do what? What has God called you to do? He has called you to love him and to love people. He said the greatest thing you can do is to love God above all and to love your neighbor as yourself. Brothers and sisters, look at the person to the side of you and say, good morning. Now look at the person on the other side and say, I love you. You know that we are to mean what we say. And we are to say what we mean, but we're only to say what God tells us to say. Amen? It is good to love one another. It is good to greet one another. Amen? Your day, you will get an uncommonly good result. 
The world might be going about worrying about this and worrying about that. You might hear this in the news. But friend, the Lord said, take no care. Fear not. Do not worry. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Can you say amen? Amen. Now, when I would take the dog leash out, my dog just seeing the leash would start jumping up and would not stop until the leash was around her neck because she knew a walk was coming. She knew I was good for a walk. She would jump and jump and wag her tail and wouldn't stop. The Bible says, be of good cheer. God loves a cheerful giver. Come before him with a sacrifice of praise. That's what we were just doing, worshiping him. When we come before the Lord with joy and thanksgiving, we always get a good response. If two farmers were given enough seed to plant a field, and farmer F takes an apathetic approach, complaining there's too much bad weather that he experienced the year before, and takes a little bit of that seed and throws it to the wind, you can be certain that farmer will not get a good harvest. How many of you were raised in a farm? So you know that farming requires hard work. But hard work will give you a good result. If the other farmer, Farmer A+, plus, who might be in worse agricultural conditions, diligently plants all the seed and tends all the fields and works even when there are storms, that farmer will get a harvest. Amen? Amen? Because God said the Bible is like a seed. We plant it in our heart and it's watered by us hearing and hearing and speaking out of our mouth things that agree with what God said. Galatians 5 6 says, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. What is love? Love is consistently trusting God and acting the way God acts us to act. He asks us to walk in love. It says in the Holy Bible in 1 Corinthians 13 4 to 8 that love, or in King James it says charity, that's the same word, suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love does not vaunt itself, is not puffed up doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, <clears throat> rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. And it says that love, or charity, never faileth. Now what does that mean? It means enduring, believing that God's promise is true. If I tell my son, I am making a hamburger for you, no matter how long it takes, he's going to say, where is it? Because he's going to believe it's coming. Amen? We must believe God no matter what we see, what's going on, what the wind looks like. We've heard the story in Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33, where Jesus came walking on the water, and the disciples wondered, who is that? And Jesus 
Jesus said to Peter, come. As long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was fine. And he could walk on the water. Amen? As long as we keep our eyes on Jesus, we are fine. In Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 40, when Paul and Silas were in jail, they had an uncommonly good response. It says that they prayed and praised God. Now, it might be very common for someone who was in jail to pray, but not as common to rejoice at it. Amen? But they had an uncommonly good response. It says in verses 16, it said, let's see, where are we? It says, hallelujah, <laughs> that they praised God so loud that the whole jail heard them. That means they were uncommonly joyful. Uncommonly loud. They didn't say, well, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're here. Let's hope we'll get out. No, they said, glory to God. Our God is faithful. And when we have that kind of response, we get a supernatural result. Amen? When Jesus said, come, and Peter came, he got uncommonly good results. He walked on water. But the minute he got his eyes off of the Savior and put his eyes on the wind and the storm, he began to sink. Amen? Now, I'm looking at a room of people that have gone through 